Hi, I'm Douglas Burdett, host of the Marketing Book Podcast, and I'm happy you could join me on this presentation for the Schweike webinar series about how to use podcasts as a marketing tactic to help your organization get known, liked, and trusted by people you don't know, but who might be interested in becoming a customer. This presentation has more on the what and why of podcasting. After this presentation, if you're interested in learning even more about the nitty gritty of podcasting, at the end of the talk, I will point you to a very helpful free resource that has loads more information. So let's get started. Listen up, how to use podcasts to help grow your business. So as I said before, my name is Douglas Burdett. I own a marketing agency in Virginia. Uh, at one time I was an artillery officer and I was uh, for many years a ad man on Madison Avenue. And in lieu of a midlife crisis, I started performing uh, stand-up comedy. I'm all better now. I got that out of my system. And I host a podcast where I have weekly interviews with authors of marketing and sales books. I launched it in January of 2015, and it was uh, within two months named uh, the number two business podcast on the new and noteworthy section. And... Uh, in 2016, LinkedIn named it as one of 10 podcasts that will make you a better marketer. And uh, a lot of happy listeners. I've got over 250 five-star reviews on iTunes. And I have uh, steady listener growth. So as you can see, it started out, uh, you know, slow, uh, a little flat, took a while to bit up ahead of steam. But it's really... Uh, continue to take off and, uh, and do quite well. And I point that out because these things don't happen overnight. You're not always going to get instant success. The first day the show was up, I had five downloads. The second day, just one. <laughs> so I say that to uh, manage your expectations about this or any kind of uh, marketing efforts you do. You're just not always going to get immediate results, but then the results that you do get over time are... Uh, uh, steady and uh, it just makes it uh, turns it into a marketing asset for you that just grows and grows. But before we talk about podcasting as a marketing tactic, let's step back and look at the entire marketing universe and then how podcasting fits into that. So the challenge of marketing has gone from space to attention. And uh, what I mean by that is that marketing has traditionally been constrained by space, meaning you could buy attention uh, in terms of advertising, by radio, TV, uh, you know, other kinds of things like that. You could, in essence, beg for attention from the news media. Uh, or you could bug people one at a time to get attention uh, through, you know, outreach, uh, sales and you can still do these things they just are getting more and more ineffective and uh, two things have really broken our wonderful marketing megaphone that's been in existence for a long long time and the first one is what I like to call the marketing interruption avoidance technology and that's uh, the things that um, make our lives better, I think. You know, things like TV remote controls and do not call lists and caller ID and uh, ad blocking software and, um, you know, uh, streaming music like Spotify or satellite radio uh, or streaming video like Netflix and even MP3 players, uh, which are what is most often used to host a podcast like the one I have. So these things have uh, enabled us to get rid of all those really annoying uh, marketing messages that we really just can't stand. But for, as a, from a marketing standpoint, that makes it much more difficult. Um, it was the good old days when there was a captive audience out there and we could shout at the people through advertising and they'd do what we told them to. <laughs> I'm joking, but it was, it was more like that. The other thing uh, that's really affected uh, the business and, and pretty much the whole world is the internet. Um, so now what's happening is this concept of every company is a media company. So just out of the blue, I can start a podcast and start building my own audience. And I didn't have to go through uh, TV or radio. You just 
you can just create your own uh, media and start attracting people, and I no longer have to go through a gatekeeper. The other thing about the internet that has really affected marketing is that buyers can do their own research, almost all their own research now, and delay having to contact the seller. So at least in a business-to-business -business situation, buyers are, through various studies, have been found to be 60 to 90 percent through their purchase before they finally reach out to uh, the seller. Uh, think about buying a car. The last thing you probably want to do is go on that lot. Um, and I know a lot of people will go to another town to test drive the car, they'll completely research it, and then they'll just show up because they're ready to buy. And what's that poor guy who's on the lot supposed to do? He, you know, uh, a lot of businesses are used to dealing with a very, very, or, or becoming used to dealing with very, very informed audiences. Uh, in the past, you had to go straight to that seller to start getting your information. So, in essence, uh, your prospects are in a castle with a drawbridge up, and they're not going to let you in uh, unless they're interested. So this has led to the resurgence of content marketing. And, you know, marketing loves its buzzwords, um, but let me explain a little bit about content marketing. First off, it's becoming very, very popular. This is a screenshot of Google Trends, which shows over time the number of people that are searching for that trend. So it's really sort of reappeared. Um, content marketing is actually a very old form of marketing, but it, uh, took a back seat for the last 7,500 years because uh, of the effectiveness of marketing to uh, captive audiences. Um, marketing book author and uh, expert Seth Godin has described content marketing as the only marketing that's left. So what is content marketing? Well, let's go to the definition uh, from the Content Marketing Institute. Content marketing is the marketing and business process for creating and distributing relevant and valuable content to attract, acquire, and engage a clearly defined and understood target audience with the objective of driving profitable customer action. So what's an example of content marketing? Uh, content marketing tactics include pretty much delivering content uh, to your prospective customers or your desired audience uh, in any form that they might find helpful. So that could be uh, blog posts, lots of things on your website like ebooks, uh, let them download checklists, cheat sheets, but also these could be printed things that you could be handing out at, at, at point of sale. Um, email marketing is, you know, email marketing is uh, often associated with spam, but if you're doing it right, you're actually using email to provide more valuable information to the people that have opted in to get information from you. Um, uh, podcasts are an example of content marketing and uh, videos and so on. So uh, that's why I say companies can do almost all these things in-house or with the help of a, uh, an outside firm or contractors. But these are examples of, of content marketing tactics. So on to podcasting. What exactly is a podcast? Well, not to split hairs, but a podcast is, uh, has four characteristics. It's an audio file. It's published online. It's part of a series, and it's something that listeners can subscribe to. So if the boss comes and says, hey, I want to do a podcast, and it turns out that they're actually talking about just putting an audio file on the website, uh, it's not really a podcast, but this is what actually makes a podcast. Um, Tom Webster from Edison Research, which is a leading provider of uh, research for presidential elections, but also podcasts, he says podcasts are to audio what TiVo is to TV, a way to watch the shows we want when we want to. So uh, who is the podcast listener? Well, let's stay with Edison Research. They do uh, a study every year, and they've done it for many years, uh, into who the podcast listener is. So the podcast listener is uh, about 21% of the population, which is uh, two, um, over two and a half times what it was in 2008. So it's really growing very quickly. Um, that's 21% of the population. That's about the number of people that are on Twitter. And everyone hears about Twitter and knows about Twitter. Podcasts are just as popular. Uh, podcast listeners tend to be smartphone owners. Most of them are listening on their smartphones, and the uh, rise of the smartphone is one of the things that's led to the growth of podcasts. The age tends to skew a little younger. 
uh, slightly more male than female. The podcast listener tends to have higher incomes uh, and tend to be uh, more educated than the average uh, person. And they listen to five podcasts a week on average. I listen to even more than that, but I'm a uh, podcastaholic. Also, the podcast listeners are very active on uh, social media. So what are the benefits of podcasting? Well, they are many. One of them, probably one of the most important ones, is that it, it enables you to establish your expertise and authority, whatever the topic is. Um, so in my case, I'm, uh, I'm interv actually interviewing a lot of very, very smart people, uh, and um, hopefully some of that rubs off on me uh, to the listener. I know it does personally because I'm learning so much and, and enjoying it tremendously. Um, you can actually build your industry connections quite a bit. Now, I'm building connections with authors, and I'm never going to sell to authors, but uh, just to give you an example, I have a friend who is a uh, software salesman at an enterprise-level company where they uh, sell event management software, and he has a podcast where he talks to people who are in the event industry. And these people that he's interviewing, uh, they are... Uh, maybe some of his clients who use that software. Uh, more likely, it's people uh, that uh, could be a prospect in the future. Uh, but most importantly, it's people who might be able to help him build his network and just meet more people uh, in the event industry. And he really comes across as, a, as an expert, and uh, it's a great networking tool for him. As I mentioned earlier, companies can now grow their own audience and podcasting benefits uh, include that you can do that. Uh, it's not the only way to grow your audience, but there's no need to rely exclusively on buying or I should say renting your audience because you can start to build your own audience and keep it. Also, uh, the benefit of podcasting is that there's a real intimacy with the listener. Basically, they're letting you into their ears and they uh, get, to, get to know and hopefully like and trust you. And I hear, from, uh, I, I hear from prospective customers who will reach out to me and say, hey, you know, I've been listening to all your podcasts, and uh, I really appreciate it, and uh, I feel like I really know you, and um, I think you might be able to help us with some of the marketing challenges that we have. So they, they get to know, like, and trust you, and then they start to, to reach out to you. And also, it's a much less crowded arena. There's, you know, maybe 5 million blogs and maybe 300,000 podcasts out there. So it's uh, – it's, it's, uh, you know, it's a, it's a chance to, to be a little different. So one of the biggest questions is, what should you podcast about? And the number one thing that you should think about to answer that question and almost any other uh, question about making your podcast successful is to focus on the listener. Think about who you want to attract and what is most interesting to them. So in the case of my podcast, I'm trying to attract marketers, and marketers are very interested in learning about new marketing books. Um, I'm not interested in uh, targeting other agencies because I can't sell to them, just to, to, to give you an example there. But John Lee Dumas, who is the host of Entrepreneur on Fire, which is a podcast that interviews an entrepreneur every single day, uh, he says that your podcast should be an overlap of passions and skill sets we call our zone of genius. And so obviously you have to have some expertise about your topic, but you also have to be passionate. And if you're not, your audience is going to sniff it out right away. And it's just there's not going to be enthusiasm and they're not going to be interested. So how often should you podcast? Well, I submit that you should do it at least weekly. And what happens, though, is a lot of people who are get all excited about starting a podcast and they're really uh, ramping up for it, they want to start with two a week or three a week or, or maybe once a day. And that's, that usually doesn't end well because uh, they can't sustain that. Um, and then they end up frustrating their audience. And, and it may be a little too much for the audience to listen to anyway. But if you start out weekly, 
and you get a handle on the time uh, commitment and uh, the process of doing podcasting, you can always increase your frequency later. But the most important thing about podcast frequency is that consistency uh, trumps uh, how often, uh, how frequently you need to do it. Another big question for podcasters is how long should each episode be? Well, uh, it goes back to that, that listener. Uh, it depends on um, them. So the size doesn't really matter. Uh, it depends on what you're talking about and who you're trying to talk to. Now, there are some popular links out there. There are some that are less than five to eight minutes, and those are great for tips or you know, daily inspiration or maybe a recap of the news. Um, there are some that are just a little bit longer, 8 to 15 minutes maybe, and they, what they might often will do is cover one topic in great depth. And then the other one that I think is probably the most popular is maybe the <clears throat> 25 to 40 minutes, which are good for commutes, uh, workouts. I think the average commute time is 27 minutes. And uh, I saw, uh, actually saw another study the other day that said 25 minutes is, is one of the most ideal uh, lengths. Mine are usually... 30 to 45 minutes. So, okay, um, you got those questions answered. The next one is, what's the best podcast format? Well, let's split it uh, into two. One is called interviews and the other is topic-based. So there are pros and cons to each. So in terms of interviews, oh, I should back up and say the, the topic-based is like one person talking, interviews, two people. So the pros of an of a, of interview-based is that the guest brings the content more or less. In other words, they're gonna do most of the talking. <laughs> if you have an interview where you're doing more talking than the person being interviewed, I think you've got a, an interviewing skills problem because uh, your guests wanna hear from the, uh, your guest. Um, there is, you could argue there's less preparation for interview based. Um, in the case of my marketing book podcast, I, I do have to read the book beforehand, but uh, there's nothing wrong with doing that. That's really uh, good for me, and it's helping me develop quite a bit. There's uh, relationship building, as I described, uh, for uh, like my friend who is the uh, uh, has the podcast about doing event marketing. He's building relation great uh, relationships with these folks, and even in my case, I'm I'm building relationships with these authors who I just think are some of the most interesting, uh, smartest people. Um, also, uh, in many instances, the guests bring the audience, uh, or they help bring an audience. So a lot of these authors that I interview, they have, some of them have varying degrees of popularity, and they have big audiences of their own. And just to give you an example, a really famous marketing guy is named Guy Kawasaki. He's written a lot of fantastic marketing books. And uh, when his interview published, uh, amongst the things he did to share it, I noticed that he shared it on LinkedIn. <laughs> and it it got like 750 shares, so there was quite a spike in the audience, and I really uh, appreciated him doing that. So you can, uh, in a sense, leverage some of your audience. The cons are finding the guests. That's always a challenge. Um, not so much a challenge for me, though, because there's lots of fantastic marketing books being written. Um, scheduling um, can be a bit of back and forth, but I use a certain piece of scheduling software that makes it really easy for the authors to pick a time. Uh, it's called Schedule Once, but there's several other good ones out there. Uh, the first time I ever speak to the author is when we're actually doing the interview, so it really makes it easy. There are sometimes some technical difficulties where uh, I think one time I had to re-record uh, an interview because the uh, author, um, his, his headphone, he didn't have one, and he insisted on trying to do it, and then I played part of it for him, and he realized we needed to do it again. But I work real hard to try to get the uh, guests to understand what they need to do, and it's not that difficult, but um, there's just a few minor things they have to do to make sure they're going to sound great. And the other thing is that uh, sometimes you have a guest on, and they just might stink. They might be a lousy interview, um, and you might not realize that. I'm knocking on wood because that's never been a problem for me. Uh, I've had just these really great uh, Yes, but that's always a that's always a possibility. You may have to, you know, uh, you may end up recording something and you don't want to use it. Now, the topic base that's where it's really just one person talking, or maybe, you know, it could be two people, but it's generally one people. Um, you control. You have total control. You're not having to deal with guests. You you control the agenda, the pace, the topic, the schedule. Uh, like I said, you don't have to find guests, uh, and it. It, it even more quickly builds your authority and credibility because uh, you're the one providing all the content. 
Um, the, the downside is that you create all the content um, and audience growth is 100% your responsibility. You know, you could argue that my audience growth is uh, somewhere, you know, I don't know, between 70 and 90% my responsibility, but it, it's really helpful to have some other folks uh, build my audience for me. And you are limited to your own knowledge and your perspectives. Um, and you really have to be much more of a natural broadcaster. I hear some podcasts where they're topic-based and I, the, the host is just reading from a script. And if they're not really good readers, uh, it's just uh, something about it I just don't really particularly enjoy listening to because if they're going to read to me, I, I could probably just read it faster myself. So uh, the other considerations for uh, launching a podcast, obviously, are a podcast name. And again, think about your listener. What's going to resonate with them? Is there some term that they all use that they would say, oh, wow, that, that's a podcast where they, they really get me. They know what I'm talking about. And uh, remember that clear trumps clever. I had a couple different podcast names for my show, and we ended up with marketing book podcasts. Or excuse me, we ended up with the marketing book podcast because it was very, very clear. Uh, which is enormously important. Um, you want to find one that's uh, SEO friendly, uh, if you can, do a little bit of C uh, keyword research there. And also, uh, is a domain available? So in my instance, marketingbookpodcast.com was available, and I purchased it. Uh, the other thing you want to do is you, you, you have to have a website for your um, podcast. So in my instance, in my case, I have a company website, which is artillerymarketing.com, but I never use that uh, URL in my podcast, I use marketingbookpodcast.com. So when people enter that into a browser, they go to that section of my company website that's all about the podcast so they can get right to what they, what they need. Um, also, podcast artwork is, is important. Uh, sadly, it's a bit of an afterthought for some people, but you really need to make it simple and make it pop, you know, use bold colors. Um, you don't really need to put a face on there unless you're already really famous. Like, for instance, Shaquille O'Neal, he was famous. He started a podcast. It makes a lot of sense. Um, the best thing you can do, though, is to do the sugar cube test. If you can see that image on there, when your podcast is on your listener's smartphone uh, and they're browsing for different podcasts, that's how big it's going to be. So a lot of podcasters are spending a lot of time and money developing these really complicated and you know fancy, beautiful uh pieces of artwork for their show and they really uh, are not seen very well. So what else is really, really, really ridiculously important for podcasting success? Well, I guess it'll come as no surprise that you need to market your podcast. Just publishing uh, is the beginning. Um, so it's sort of like somebody who's gotten ready for a marathon and then the, uh, the marathon starts. Uh, that's just the beginning. So there's some things that you want to do to continuously market your podcast. Um, you want to make sure that you're on all the podcast directories. So Google has one, iTunes does, Stitcher, and so forth. Um, like I said, you want to leverage the audience of your guests if you have guests. Uh, you can uh, go to existing communities like online and make them aware of uh, your show and uh, make sure it's useful and helpful. Don't be spamming it, but just <coughs> uh, I'll give you an example. Sometimes I'll interview an author who has their own LinkedIn page uh, for a community they've built, and they don't mind me going on there and posting that the owner of that community has just done this interview. The people that are already on there like that. They want to know about that. But one of the most important thing, probably the most important thing for marketing your podcast is that you want to capture email addresses from your listeners above all else. So if you can capture the email address of your listeners, that then gives you permission to start to market to them. Uh, and it doesn't mean spamming and annoying them, but you can start to send them additional information that you know is going to get through to them. So what you don't want to say is... Uh, like our Facebook page instead of liking the email because social media is like a passing parade. And you can't always reach out directly to them, but email is what you want. It comes to them when they're ready to read it. And uh, there was a, a recent McKinsey study that showed that for customer acquisition, email is 40 times more effective than social media. Um, social media plays an important role for uh, sharing content, but you really want to capture that email address and then respect your subscribers and continue to send them 
helpful information. You do want to use social media to spread it, as I s talked about how uh, Guy Kawasaki helped uh, spread the message. Um, I use all kinds of social media to promote the show after, it's, uh, after an episode is launched. And then you also want to pitch relevant media. The news media uh, certainly wants to know about certain uh, podcasts. So um, if you don't market your podcasts, um, you're not going to be as successful. Don't expect it to. If you have a build it and they will come approach to your podcasting success, you're going to be disappointed. So speaking about dis being disappointed, why do podcasts fail? Well, almost unbelievably, most pad podcasts don't make it past episode number seven. Uh, there's generally, the reasons why are a lack of focus. People don't quite understand who their real audience is or what it is they're providing. Uh, there's a lack of a niche, which is common to a lot of businesses where they want to be all things to all people. But if the more specific you can be, the better. There's an expression I love in the marketing world called, uh, where they say there's riches in niches. You don't need all the customers. You just need the right ones. Think about my friend who has the, uh, um, podcast about uh, events marketing. Well, that's real relevant and interesting to the same kinds of people that he's selling to. Um, also, people have unrealistic expectations, particularly about uh, time. Um, when you haven't done something, it's human nature to think it's going to take a little less time than it really does, but it takes some time, and <clears throat> generally speaking, it's, it's more work for, for somebody. Um, you have to think about that. Now, in terms of investing, there's not a lot of costs, and if you're spending a whole lot of money on the equipment, I would submit <laughs> you're doing it wrong. Here's an example that uh, shows some of my equipment and costs. So I use Skype, uh, which is free, and everyone seems to be using, at least the people that I interview. They all have Skype accounts. Uh, I use one piece of software to record the calls, uh, the audio. Um, there is some wonderful free editing software online. I use Audacity. Uh, there's others from Adobe where you can pay $20 a month for a subscription. Apparently that's very, very good. Um, you know, my assistant edits it and then some of the post-production work uh, is free. You can put it through Auphonic. Um, they give you a certain number of hours free per month, but it really does a great job. It saves us a lot of time at making sure the audio sounds good. The microphone, the one I'm talking on right now, I hopefully I sound okay, uh, is an ATR2100, uh, which costs all of 55 bucks. Um, you don't have to rush right out and buy a $325 Heil PR40, which is a really good pot, uh, really good uh, microphone. But um, why don't you not buy that right off the bat? Uh, start out with this one and uh, see how it goes. Headphones, <laughs> I'm wearing $20 headphones that work just fine. Um, uh, there's uh, also hosting. You, you don't want to host your podcasts on your website. You, you want to host them with a service like Libsyn, which is really terrific. And they um, have all the bandwidth to be able to provide uh, all the episodes to all the different places where it gets downloaded. Um, and they also get it distributed properly to all the places like iTunes and Google and, and Stitcher. Um, you need to have some website hosting, but if you already have a company website, you're, you're going to be okay by having your uh, section of your website devoted to the podcast where your listeners can go to get information that you may have mentioned on the show. Um, so you, and you can even put the, uh, you can put a player on your, um, you can put a little uh, piece of art on your website where people can actually play the interview but the actual files are going to ex exist over on, a, on the hosting service. And then I have to buy books every once in a while <laughs> uh, before the uh, guest comes on. But those costs are going down because I'm getting more and more books showing up from authors and publishers uh, you know, now that my podcast is known. And they know um, that uh, a lot of listeners to podcasts about books, they tend to buy a lot of books. So I'm getting a lot of support and help there. So. Let's say uh, you're interested in learning more about podcasting. What should you do next? Well, I would recommend that you go to uh, the free podcast course that John Lee Dumas has set up. It's really terrific. I, uh, he has a, uh, like 20 podcast episodes. He's got 23 videos. And I listened to this after I'd launched 
my show, and I just thought it was really, really uh, terrific. And now he's doing this in case you might want to join uh, the, the service he has called Podcasters Paradise, but which you can do, and it's a very helpful thing. But before you do that, if you watch these videos and listen to his shows, it will take you through what you need to think about uh, before you launch a podcast. And I've got a, a link here that might make it easier for you to find, which is bit.ly slash podcast course, um, all caps, bit.ly slash podcast course. So that's the overview for uh, podcasting. How did I do? Um, I would love to hear from you. Um, you can reach me on Twitter at Artillery Market. Uh, my email address is Douglas at ArtilleryMarketing.com. And if you'd like to visit the, the website uh, about the show, uh, go to MarketingBookPodcast.com. So I hope you found this helpful, and I'd love to hear from you.